Hello. Uh, my name is Forrest. I, I am a, I'm, I'm an artist. Uh. So something I get asked a lot on my stream is how do you paint faster or more efficiently? Uh, and a lot of the times what I'm doing when I'm working on something is I end up working with the lasso tool. And so a lot of people ask me, how do you use the lasso tool to paint? Because I think a lot of the times when people watch my painting process and they see that I end up lasso tooling something and painting, it can get to like a finished looking product uh, quicker than you might expect. So I thought I'd make a video where I kind of talk about how you can become a more efficient painter. And on top of that, also kind of show my whole lasso tool process and how I developed that. And as always, thank you to everyone that has been watching all my latest videos. I really, really appreciate it. Please comment, subscribe, like, do whatever. And uh, you can ask me questions. Uh, you could tell me I'm wrong. I had like, I don't know, like maybe a hundred comments on one of my last videos. Uh, one of them, someone said that my intro was annoying. Uh, so now I'm self-conscious about that. So uh, I'm just never going to do an intro again. I think that's the right decision. I've never seen a therapist. Anyway, let's get into how to paint more efficient, how to paint fast. We're gonna paint fast, okay? That's what we're gonna do. So uh, I wasn't sure exactly how to show this demo. So I've actually just been sitting on this sketch for a little while. I've been wanting to paint it and uh, decided I'm gonna use this video as an opportunity to just sit down and actually start painting on it a little bit. Um, something I really like to do is you know, after I have a sketch done or something, maybe before or after work, just to kind of wind down. I really like these sort of, uh, I don't know what's called, like brainless render uh, assignments that I sort of give myself where the sketch is done. The majority of the work I think is like pretty much there. I could make other decisions and change the drawing from here, but really from here, I'm just going to be painting on it. Um, and I find it can be a little bit therapeutic. I can play around with new brushes this way. I can play around with some new techniques and stuff like that. Um, for this, I'm not going to be exploring new techniques. I'm going to be showing you guys this very specific way that I that I tend to work. But uh, I figure this this will work as a base for that. You can see, obviously, I have some color uh, laid in. All I did for this, I, this is a new thing for me that I've been trying is uh, I've just been taking this sort of like softer, uh, softer brush and blocking in some colors behind the lines. You can see the lines are uh, these two layers. This is like rough line art, refined line art. I'm just going to merge those. Um, and then, yeah, I have, uh, this, uh, sort of airbrushed in, um, color layer back here. So one thing that I do that is, is uh, probably a little bit uncommon is I like to just immediately start painting on top of everything. Uh, there's a lot of people that they are very, very layer driven, um, like very specific, specific layers. And I was kind of like that when I started working on League and over time I realized that when you are too structured with your layers, it makes it very, very difficult for the illustration to be adaptable. And I think people end up getting caught up in layers because they think that uh, organization of layers um, is kind of how you end up getting that clean look and you don't want to mess anything up. Um, and I think that you actually get that clean look in a lot of other ways. Um, and a lot of it is actually kind of just how uh, my painting process actually works. So one thing I really like to start with is I'm just going to paint the majority of like this head here. Okay, so one thing I like to start with is ambient occlusion. If you're not familiar with ambient occlusion, uh, like I said, feel free to check out my How to Paint Everything video, uh, where I kind of go over all the basics of the form principle. But chances are there's going to be some ambient occlusion down here, just because that's, you know, wherever the lighting's going to be, it's not coming from underneath the character in this way. So one thing this allows me to do right off the bat is it allows me to figure out what my values are going to be. So if I start blocking this in down here, I'm taking a super, super saturated orange. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, I am figuring that down here, the light around the pumpkin is going to be bouncing around like a ton. Um, and it's just going to be saturating itself, essentially. It's going to be bouncing into this black, which is maybe a little bit cooler. I kind of have it blocked in as this like teal right now. Um, but uh, it's not going to be super, super vibrant, and it's probably going to be absorbing a lot of that light. Um, so anything that's going to be bouncing up in this is probably going to be his skin and this purple that's probably going to be leaning more towards a warmer purple so it's not going to be really affecting too much of this down here i'm also just uh i talked about working in, with the lasso tool but i'm not actually even touching that right now the reason why is because this 
area down here is not what's important. So this gets into a little bit of some edge control, right? Which is why I like using the lasso tool, uh, but not for everything. I think it's a mistake to be using it all over the place. Uh, and why I like to start with this like softer brush, um, whether it's this brush or I kind of use this brush, which has a little bit more texture to it. There's a little bit more of an edge to it. And the reason I like that is because uh, there's one soft edge uh, on one side and one harder edge on another side. And uh, you just kind of get some interesting shapes uh, that come out of that uh, because it's not completely smooth. Um, so you see, I'm already kind of seeing here little bits of like dimples that might be kind of appearing little uh, like imperfections all inside this uh, little pumpkin head in here. Uh, so all I'm doing is now that I've kind of blocked this shadow in here, I'm getting an idea of what those values might end up being. Now I'm starting to see that, okay, these values up here need to be darker. They need to be a little bit darker. If I'm going to reach that like pure form of orange, uh, uh, the pure chroma, um, which I'll have to do a whole other video on at some point to go over that, then I'm going to need to bring that value down a little bit more. So um, I don't want it to be too dark here. It's getting little bit too dark so I'm gonna be kind of doing this a little bit and again not touching that lasso tool or anything yet all I'm doing is starting to kind of paint in with this brush that's not super super sharp but it's got a little bit of a sharp edge to it and like I said I don't really care that much about uh, painting on top of stuff I could paint on top of that bat I don't care because eventually I'm just gonna end up going into it at some point uh, anyway painting it I could split uh, like separate it on another layer if I really wanted but um, the reason I don't care that much is because if I have this thing here and I'm just kind of painting on top this is all going to be sort of a soft lost edge anyway for this type of an image right I want that bat to pop off so I don't really care about what's happening over on this left side as much so if it ends up just kind of being a massive value um, and color then you know whatever like it'll it'll just be that I guess so, again kind of filling this in getting some of those random shapes uh, random little bits of, uh, of brush strokes but also just bringing those values uh, a little bit more in line with maybe where I want it to to go in the end also kind of figuring out how I want this purple to show up because I want to make sure that it's bright enough um, that uh, it's gonna pop off against the uh, the black jacket like that and then whenever I feel like things start to maybe get to where maybe I can start refining this a little bit more that's when I'm going to start uh, breaking out the lasso tool and really carefully choosing my forms so this is probably maybe a time where I would do that right so right now you can see like this edge is coming out of the lines and all this way I could brush it back in like that I kind of like that because I don't want everything to be crisp and this is actually a mistake I made when I first started implementing the lasso tool into my uh, processes I was using it like everywhere because I think that you know it, it looked really nice I could get these really crisp shapes in there and stuff and really like nice like hard edges to bring all the detail in but the problem is if you have it everywhere it just kind of looks like really sterile and it looks really clean and like it's not there's no place for the eye to rest so here I have the lasso tool I'm grabbing it and what I'm doing is I'm making this like internal shape right so I have these little imperfections in there because I'm like yeah as that's like rounding it'd be kind of cool if it like had this little divot in there maybe there's even another one right there maybe as it starts to go down here and then maybe right about here now what I'm thinking is how this form is rounding and what part of the light it's going to be um so we have this sort of soft diffused light shining sort of directly on this character at the moment so as the form is sort of rounding i don't want it to go completely into shadow but i do want it to darken um as the form is rounding a little bit so i have this selection right now and i'm taking the soft round brush and i'm sort of just starting to lightly paint that in um, and you can see how I'm getting this crisp shape within here. Um, now what this does, and the reason I like this uh, so much for, for my process, is that it is really good for creating a clear separation between either light and shadow or between uh, the halftone and the center light. Um, and you can sort of push back against it and decide however you want to 
um, have it like wrap around, right? So maybe if I wanted it to go a little bit more into shadow, maybe like right back here, it's going to go a little bit more into shadow. I want to make sure I get that form right. Right, as it starts to dip down, then I'm going to bring it a little bit more into the orange, and I'd start to paint it in like that. And you can see how keeping that nice, hard, like, crisper edge in there uh, makes it a lot more clear where that separation of light and shadow is, which I think is really important. Um, I'll always go back and paint within this. And in fact, you know, like I said, you can really tell when someone starts implementing this into their into their workflow and they're not going back and painting it because it's it, everything is super, super crisp. Everything is really, really clean. And it's just it's kind of distracting. So then I'm also going to start working down here on this side of the pumpkins. Like curve wherever it starts to dip in here. And the thing that I kind of like to embrace about the lasso tool some people use the pen tool. Um, the reason I like the lasso tool is because it's not always clean. Um, I don't actually like having like a super, super clean edge that's exactly the shape that you want. I mean, it depends. If you're working on like an inorganic object um, that should that should look manufactured, then yeah, like I would use the pen tool or a shape tool or something like that, where there's a really specific curve that you really want to get, then that would definitely be the tool for, for that. But Otherwise, if it's something like this, it's more of like, you know, this weird pumpkin <laughs> shape. Uh, it's a little bit more organic, then I don't want it to look completely perfect. I want it to uh, kind of have these little imperfections as it like dips in and stuff. Um, and what I just did is I just inversed. I went up to select and inverse. And what that does is you can see right now I'm selecting the inside. And if I go up and do select inverse, now it's everything on the outside. Um, and I do that in order to kind of go back and forth and refine edges where I want. So if I wanted to select, uh, yeah. So if I wanted to select inverse right here, um, in order to kind of pop a little bit like of a highlight here, uh, as the form starts to round around that, then I can really, really emphasize this specific, uh, line, this specific shape, uh, there. And now you can see it looks super, super crisp. And this takes a lot of refinement. This takes a lot of time to make it look just right. And um, the reason that I think I'm like hesitant sometimes to uh, teach people uh, like how I use this is because I do think that a lot of people end up getting it really caught in their heads that like you take the soft brush, you take a lassoed shape and all of a sudden you have this crazy refined painting and it looks so good and like it can look clean, but it's not you're missing a lot of nuance with um, texture, with form, with color and light. Like there's all these little things that you also have to make sure are balanced as you're working on this. But stuff like this, it's perfect for right here, like right along the top of these, like this teeth shape. I'm going through, I selected it and I'm going through and just painting it and then I'm going to deselect it. And the reason that I wa want to deselect it uh, is because I want to go back in and I want to make sure that it's not super crisp. I want to make sure that there's a little bit of uh, looseness with the edges in some areas, not everywhere, but in some areas, I want to make sure that it's not completely refined. Not everything is given the exact same amount of attention with its edge control. So I might even just start like painting a little bit on top like this and get in some very like specific textures or something. And another way of doing this that I really like is uh, I, I have this brush here um, that has a really, really soft edge on one side and a really crisp edge. It's very similar to this brush that I was using to render. Um, the difference is that there's less texture involved and this is a lot softer on both those edges. But this one, I can really go in and without even having to do the lasso tool, I can just decide that, you know, there's a, there's a really crisp edge that's just like a smooth, smooth gradient. So sometimes I'll do this and uh, also just kind of add in a little bit of, of texture in there. The other thing to sort of increase some of your painting efficiency, something that I really, uh, started applying a lot into my work is I just paint with a completely opaque brush like this. Um, there's a lot of artists that do this. I do it a lot with just like basic round brush, but I will also do it with, um, more of like a textured brush like this. 
Um, sometimes I use one with like a little bit different of a shape. Uh, it really depends on what I'm working on. Um, but uh, I do that a lot. So like in here, in order to save time, I really just want that to be a brighter value. I really just want this to be a brighter value. So I just kind of cut back into those shapes and fill them. Um, and it takes a lot of time to get really comfortable with doing stuff like this. Um, it takes uh, a lot of a lot of practice, a lot of patience. Um, took me a lot of doing uh, very specific color and light studies um, of different uh, movie stills and stuff like that before I really, really felt comfortable uh, using a fully opaque brush for painting in color and light. And then especially here, so as you start to see these transitions in other shapes, like right here on the jacket, I'll actually just kind of trace over it once more with the lasso tool and uh, recreate that shape and close it in. And this is where I think a lot of people just decide like they're going to have everything separated on layers. But again, the reason I don't like that is when I did that, everything just became very, very clean. Um, and it took away a lot of those little tiny imperfections that I guess just kind of made it feel a little bit more like a painting. Um, there's this very specific digital look that you can get um, that I think some people like, but I, I don't really, I think I learned over time that I'm not like a huge fan of it. So uh, I tried adapting my personal, um, I guess, like technique or how I developed paintings to try and have a little bit more of that uh, natural, um, like less crisp, more, more painterly feel to them. I don't know how to describe it. And then stuff like here, if I really want to do end up getting this like edge on this leather jacket, let's say I wanted to really emphasize the texture. I could just take that brush I was talking about and use that and decide, yeah, it's going to go in. It's going to make a crease. I could even do the other side to emphasize like a little bit of a highlight or something. So I do that a lot. And the other reason I really like the lasso tool is because it's really good at being able to make adjustments um, later on. So let's say all of a sudden I actually really want this uh, this part of the jacket to be longer. Um, how I used to do that back in the day is I would open up the uh, my, my brush, whatever brush I was using, and I would redraw it. I'd probably erase all this out or something, um, completely redraw it, build it all back up. And what the lasso tool is sort of doing is it's just cutting a couple steps out of that. Um, and again, this takes a lot of practice because what I'm doing essentially, if I was to break this down, fundamentally what the lasso tool is doing here is I'm creating a new drawing for myself. So when I'm using the lasso tool, a lot of the times I'm just drawing, right? If I wanted to suddenly add a leaf, onto this, then I drew a leaf, and there's a leaf. Now if I wanted to go a step further, and I wanted to start painting that, then I can take the drawing of, let's say, the center light of this leaf, it's probably not technically the center light, but you know, we're going to go with that, and I will start to imply that. I'm going to sit here a little bit. I'm going to paint a little bit more on this and um, I'll show you, uh, you know, how it uh, looks in the end. So, you know, I've been sitting here painting for uh, about 45 minutes in total. Um, uh, I'm, d I'm definitely not going to be able to paint this whole thing. Uh, you know, if you guys really want to see the full process, maybe I'll end up painting this whole thing as a little demo. Um, let me know in the comments. But uh, I think this is enough for now just to get the point across of uh, how I tend to paint things. But let's uh, take a little before and after shot there. Uh, there. Flipping back and forth. And yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of progress in a short amount of time. Just want to emphasize again, a lot of this is not me saying, "Oh yeah, use the lasso tool, use a brush with full opacity, all that stuff," and then all of a sudden you can paint really, really fast. These are things that can help you paint quicker, but the only way that they really work is if you know what you're doing. And so, 
you know, I'm pretty sure all of my videos at this point are going to end. So we're going to talk about how you should learn fundamentals. And where can you go to learn the fundamentals? Spooky. Where can the people go to learn the fundamentals of art? Can they go to gumroad.com slash Forrest Emil? What? Are you kidding me? Spooky, is that weird? Where can, where can they, where can they learn the fundamentals, Spooky? Tell me. Whisper it. Kill all humans. That's right. You can go to my Gumroad where I have a whole thing where I talk about fundamentals of art. Or alternatively, you can just watch my first episode of my beginner's guide to art fundamentals and then not buy it at all and instead just go to all the other free resources that I recommend on there. So really just do any of those. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video. And if you have any other ideas for videos that you'd want to see me do, feel free to suggest them. Okay, bye.